Hi, I'm Robert. I'd like to give you a quick tour of what we can do at Scope AR at WorkLink and show you what we've got set up with our customer demo, ClickBond, which has made some incredible augmented reality experiences on top of their F18 model here. So if you take a quick look, what you're looking at is a slice of a nose from an F18 fighter jet. Now, this has been sectioned out to help you see how a technician might uh, address and solve problems with augmented reality to help. Now, what ClickBond does is they make these uh, non-destructive fasteners. These are You can think of these as like glue and stick, very simply. Uh, the uh, fastener allows you to anchor and attach uh, componentry, subsystems, cable routing, uh, hard points, and those things are, are built to withstand intense vibration, temperature, and really the rough environment that would exist inside of an aircraft component. So, what are the challenges that this company faced? They had um, a, a reasonably uh, substantial problem with the technicians that were applying them, their customers actually. Now, because this is an adhesive uh, type of fastener, it's very sensitive to two things. One, that the, that the person installing it knows which uh, click bond fastener they have and all the relevant uh, information. And two, that they're following the right process for surface preparation and location for those particular fasteners. So, they reached out to us and we built an amazing augmented reality experience. I'm gonna give you just a quick tour of what that looks like today. So, I'm gonna pull open WorkLink on our iPad, but this experience is ubiquitous between uh, iPhone, Android, uh, HoloLens, or any of the other um, AR kit or AR core uh, enabled devices. So, um, first step in creating the augmented reality experience on an iPhone, pardon me, I'm gonna zip around here, is aligning and matching the AR experience to what it's looking at. There are many ways to do this. I'm gonna show you by far the coolest one, something called object tracking. Now what object tracking does, is it basically is looking at this shape and it's looking to match it with what it sees. So over here you can see that there's a rough outline and I have my actual device, which looks something similar to that. And my job is gonna to be to align those roughly similarly and when they get close enough, it will snap. Bam, it just happened. Did you see that? We'll do it one more time. I'm looking away, I get reasonably close, and bam, it connects. So I'm gonna say, okay, that's good. And now I can actually check that. As I walk around, you can see just how close the tracking is to the real device. This is the, the, the software is looking at the camera feed and able to track and reposition the augmented reality uh, graphic layer on top of the space. So, now I have done the critical step of aligning the, I, the device, the augmented reality platform itself, to the model where we're gonna do the augmented reality. So, okay, let's, let's go back to our click one problems. I mentioned that uh, identification and product information was a key challenge that they had. So what I'm looking at here is this, this interface that we've created that's in virtual reality, uh, I'm sorry, augmented reality. If I like put my hand in front of this, you can see it's not, it's not actually there, right? Similarly, it has uh, pointed out several of these click on fasteners here on this device. Uh, I can tap to select those, and you can see now it's, it's solving one of the core problems that a technician might face. Which of the devices should I be addressing? Now, um, you can see here there's a little bit of tracking error, but it's not too bad. It certainly will help me to identify um, which fasteners are the ones to be treated. And I can pull up some really handy product information. In fact, the full specification for those particular click on attachments right here in AR. So that takes care of two major problems. Which fasteners I should be looking at and what is the detailed spec for those? Um, I can then jump to other fasteners in the, uh, in the experience, pull up their associated tech sheets the same way. So I now have brought core product lifecycle management information right to the very fingertips of the person performing the procedure in augmented reality. Huge value there. Now, I'm going to jump back by tapping the menu here. I'm going to go to the procedure step. And at any point if I would, if I like, I can re replace the object. You can see here it's maybe got a quarter of an inch, but the longer I point at this, the longer it actually refined and uh, aligned that particular augmented reality layer. Now, the next thing, procedure. So these are uh, what we call work instructions. It's a set of instructions that are followed sequentially, or sometimes non-sequentially, 
to allow a user to explore the correct process for getting um, some key work done. So in this case here, we're gonna be some, installing something fictional called a flux capacitor, right from Back to the Future. I'm gonna step through these work instructions, but you can see how those animations are applied and the detailed information I would need. I can step through them to step two. And now in this case, I'm gonna show two really important things. One is that I have on demand a video that shows exactly how surface prep should be executed. That video is living in augmented reality. As you can see, I can basically look around it. It's sort of like putting a TV where I would like, wherever I would like. The second thing is this particular fastener here, it's showing you that it rotates and then uh, mounts laterally into the stiffener on the F-18. Now if I actually move around, you'll see that that fastener mounts to this surface right here. That simple orientation pre prevents, or really helps the technician to understand without any, any cognitive load onto how exactly that should be aligned. Just think about how you would instruct that, whether it's in a printed document or even digital PDF format. Very, very challenging, and yet with augmented reality, it's just perfectly intuitive. Great, so now I've got those. I can show other fasteners need to be installed for pre preparation for the wiring harness. I can step through this again and show uh, this actual module that's going here. And then finally, the, um, the harness itself and the wiring route. So, I would like to then show you one other really cool thing. Now that I've completed this work, I can digitally sign that I've completed that work. That's by hitting this checkbox, and you can see step five, number zero, has been completed today by JDS. That system is now, or that data, is now stored in our WorkLink platform and available for other people to pull up at any point to ver verify and validate that this uh, work construction was completed correctly. Secondly, I can even augment that with a photo showing the completed work. Now, I'm gonna take this photo, it's gonna show the actual part. This is not showing the augmented reality layer, obviously, but this will track and stay with that particular uh, work instruction completion step such that it can be pulled up any point later for validation or verification. So with that, I'm showing you how this work instruction exists in augmented reality. And then I'm gonna step over here and show you how that was made and how that connects to Siemens Team Center PLM. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> One last fun thing. Um, where is this piece inside the aircraft? I mentioned this is an F-18, right? So just for uh, orientation's sake, we have full aircraft that's available here. You're gonna see a selfie from my trusted cameraman. To scale, he is sitting inside this F-18. <laughs> And that is where this particular component is located in the airport. Great. So with that said, I'm going to step over here and show you the general data workflow that happens in an augmented reality work construction. Now what you saw here originally was the app itself. That data comes from the Workflow platform, which is managed here, and essentially it's a content management uh, system, a CMS. The work instruction itself is created in this authoring step called WorkLink Create. And that is a browser-based software where you can drag and drop the elements. Just like you're making a video file or a PowerPoint, you can introduce multiple different uh, heterogeneous uh, media types and create the total experience that you like. Uh, it's very similar to, like I said, video editing, or perhaps creating a DVD menu for uh, just stepping through various sequences. Now, uh, this step here, we are proud to have the claim that this is the fastest AR authoring software on Earth. In terms of going from zero to publishing to a device, it is simply unmatched by any other uh, commercially available AR package out there. Now, we partnered recently with Siemens Team Center Manufacturing and the EasyPrint team to allow all the rich data from Siemens Team Center to be imported automatically into this WorkLink CMS. Now what does that do for you? Jumping a little bit deeper, if you look at what's contained inside the bill of process, you have electronic work instructions, visual aids, product view information, and the um, bill of materials in its various formats, and as well as the geometry. This is already very close to everything that you would need to create an AR experience. So what we've done is we've worked to create 
automated CAD conversion and destination system that inherits all these rich uh, PLM data, converts it to the form factors that would be needed for augmented reality and work length, and retains a lot of really key information, specifically the materials, specifically the part relationships between subcomponents in an assembly, such that when you do the authoring step, you can do those animations as one, two, three, four. You can pull in the various work instructions, whether textual or graphical, and really allow the, the AR designer to have that super rich environment for it. One click publish, now you're in the CMS, and with any uh, authorized user, you can access that from the WorkLink app. And I mentioned the WorkLink app is on uh, iPhone, Android, uh, and um, HoloLens, or really any of the iOS or Android systems. There's one other method that we work on, and we're very proud to, to announce it today, is that from this bill of uh, process, we've created an automated way to bypass WorkLink Create and go straight into our CMS system. That means if you do some, some rule-based assignment in that conversion, you can basically export without any further effort uh, from bill of process directly to a CMS and have that be consumable by the WorkLink app. Now, why does that matter? Imagine you have a parts catalog with, I'm not exaggerating, 40,000 components. There's simply no way that you're going to exercise, even with the world's fastest AR environment, authoring environment, 40,000 uh, different work instructions and AR experiences that has to be automated. So that's where we're very proud to have the build process export directly to the CMS with some rules. That allows you to do some simple but nonetheless very valuable use cases for exploring product data uh, exploring relationships between parts and the PMI. Yes, thank you. So with that, I hope you found this very helpful. I'll give you a quick uh, peek at what work that create looks like from a browser perspective. And that's this right here. So you're looking at uh, an HTML5 coded web application that's in a, a web app, a browser, sorry. Uh, this this uh, entire tech stack can be uh, air gaps in a private cloud or in a public cloud. And like I mentioned before, it's similar to a movie editing environment or PowerPoint where you bring in multiple types of assets right into your editing environment. A particular asset will have its part hierarchy, so these are the different components you have loaded in, and you can use these to create multiple animations and steps and rich work instructions. Uh, you can see here this, uh, this PDF or still images brought in conjunction and then if you look at that flow chart of information through the augmented reality, you can see these various, uh, what we call sequence editors, allow the, the user to navigate these various steps. So this is actually, it looks reasonably complicated from here. We found that after about a day of training, uh, you can produce work instructions like what I just showed you in about one to two hours per work instruction. So really, really fast uh, from zero to, to completed AR work instructions. With that, we'd love to talk to you. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Hey, hi. I'm Aran Adil from Siemens. And uh, after we saw all the great things that Scope AR WorkLink uh, can do with augmented reality, I want to speak about integration with Siemens Team Center EasyPen applications. What you see here on the screen is the Team Center EasyPen application. Uh, for the bit of process, you see here the sequence of operations. We have the parts that consume to, the, to every single step. All this information is, is been uh, highly configured in the team center environment, and we have the product views, this whole 3D scenarios. We, I took a few product views with uh, exploded mode, and that will be used for the uh, animation that you will see in a moment. Um, the integration we created is based on is a file-based integration based on XML, so you can leverage all the beauty of uh, the configurations and to uh, control what has been exporting to the AR scenario. The idea is to have the team center as the master of the data. The digital thread of the models are using for all the way down to the shop floor, to the augmented reality application, including PMI and all the supported information, including attachments to the operation. All these, in a push of a button, is sent out and automatically generating the scenario in the WorkLink application and being published to the cloud. And uh, on the client side, if you see here on the on the easy plan, once it's done by submitting to a workflow, the data is automatically exported and published into the working uh, create. On the working create, you can see that everything is created automatically. The sequence of steps, you see here this is the, the number 
of the operation, uh, the idea of the operation. The parts have been assigned to be the tracker parts. You will see in a minute in the model what means the tracker, the tracking object. We want to use the tracking technology. Uh, animations is coming. Now let's look at the let's look at the application in the demo. So the scenario was published into the uh, working platform on the cloud, and it's been downloaded to the app. On the, here, I'm using the the, uh, the tablets, but I can also use the Hololens. Now you can see that I have multiple trackers that are available for me to support different positions of the car. The demo here is about bench assembly, so we're taking a small assembly, uh, free, free hands assembly, and we support it. We need to take the parts, locate it, let it, let it learn for a few seconds, and now we can walk through all the steps as it's defined in the EasyCon, and we can watch the animation. The product views that are being defined becomes as a supported image. Uh, in the future, all the PMI will also be uh, available here. We have a few modes that are really nice. One is switching to device. What you see here is on every step, we only see the parts that are uh, relevant for this um, step, including to see the entire scenario. The other really cool part is to use the active tracking. As I said before, this is a bench assembly. Since it's not a stationary, so if I change the position, the, uh, the AR is keep track the object. Uh, what's also really nice about this application is Scope AR that you can define as many AR tracking objects as you want to support different scenarios, different stages of the assembly, a uh, large assembly, and uh, you can associate trackers to different stages of the process, different, different uh, steps. Uh, back to this, you can also switch to an interactive mode. You can explore your 3D model a little bit more without the AR. You can create a, and open a remote system by using one of your colleagues to call in. Both can share the same scenario. This whole scenario can be recorded. Uh, a snapshot can be taken to, for non-conformance. A data collection can be defined in the EasyPlan platform to be streamed down and used by the operators on the shop floor and the inspection. Uh, data collections and PMI become very important and powerful information we want to completely have a stream from the team center, easy plan platform, uh, all the way down to the chauffeur and back to the team center for the as record as built instruction. So that is uh, all about the integration, Siemens Copy R. We're looking forward to, uh, to have these integrations more and more tight and robust and rich. Thank you very much.